most of the time when people tell me their game ideas, so I might be you know, a party or something like that, and oh, you work on games, let me tell you my game idea. Most of the time it isn't a game idea, it's a narrative world in which you set a game, and actually it could be a film, it could be a novel, it could be a comic. A game idea gets into the interactions, what does the player get to do, how do they interact with the game, how do they get to control the game, or how does the game try and control them. There's a lot of hand waving, <laughs> and then there's a lot of shouting and screaming. moaning. Um, yeah, I mean, I think everyone, you, you discuss it in vague terms, you know, what kinds of games would you like to make? And then there's there's a fair amount of scribbling on, on whiteboards and... We had to think about um, technical side of things for the iPhone. I mean, we obviously wanted to um, make it look as good as we could. Uh, we also get it running on the retina and the iPad um, without too much extra work. So, you know, the technology we developed, we would uh, write so that it would scale according to the platform it's on and do the graphics accordingly. I'm constantly surprised at how, even artistically, how technically heavy it is. It, it's not, if you're good at drawing pictures, it doesn't mean you're going to be good at making video game art or, you know, if you're really good. It, it takes a lot of discipline, as Stu says, to kind of make this stuff to work together. And I think I was lucky enough to find two people to, to work with who are very, very good at what they do. So individually, they're, they're excellent at what they do. And that, that's key. You need that mix of people who bring the different skill sets to the table. I think we all, we all pretty much knew the kind of games we were going to do as a, as a first start. Before we got to that, though, we, did, we had that big concept meet where we had a number of game concepts on the table, uh, and some of them were, you know, much shorter, sort of two, three month project cycles, uh, and we we went through a lot of, you know, did we want to do this? And we, we had games that were much more puzzly, games that were much more sort of, you know, uh, quick to play, sort of casual, uh, and then we settled on them. The worst idea of, of the hardcore longer to make game yeah. rather than yeah. the easy to make <laughs> casual game. Um, and in a way there was no half measure of doing that. It, it had to be, you know, well, you want to write your own 3D engine? Yeah, it was all or nothing really, wasn't it? We just yeah, wanted yeah. to kind of, um, I don't want to say AAA, but <laughs> I think we felt that we wanted to kind of push it a little bit mm. instead of being a standard kind of iPhone game or iPad game. I think there is, there is a uh, a slight problem with the, the iPhone market in that there are so many products out there now um, that if you say, well let's let's do something that will only take us two or three months, the market is saturated with games on the iPhone that did only take two or three months, so they've got a simple mechanic behind them, they're easy to replicate uh, you know, by other companies. Um, so that, that in itself is a risk. I mean, yeah, we, we wouldn't have spent so much time and money on it, but by the same token, it's, um, well, I wouldn't necessarily, necessarily say it's more unique, but I think certainly there's, there's fewer games of that type on the iPhone uh, than, you know, another angry verse or another game where you, you flick a man and he, you know, flies into a wall or whatever. The game is called Call of Cthulhu The Wasted Land. It's a turn-based strategy game uh, with heavy role-playing elements in it. Um, it's based on the writings of a cult horror writer called H.P. Lovecraft, who was writing horror around the kind of 1920s, 1930s. It's a, we're using the game system of Call of Cthulhu, which is a paper-based role-playing system, and we're adapting some of the elements of that. We, we're working with Chaosium, who publish that game in order to, to bring this together and they've been sending us ideas and looking at the design of keys and things like that. I don't think we rejected much since we started. I mean obviously we rejected whole game ideas right at the start but um, once once we got started I don't think we've gone down too many blind alleys. Well the, I mean the, none of the ideas actually that we rejected I would say are rejected outright. We actually, I mean I keep a list of game idea stuff or ideas that can go in games and it's huge. I think one of the great things about doing this, this game and the style of what we're doing at us as a company is we actually see the release of this game is really potentially just the start of what we do, you know, because if you're doing game on mobile or you know, because of everybody's PCs are now connected, 
actually there's a strong network to lose. So we can get feedback from players on what worked or didn't, and then we can incorporate that straight back in. Or that could be really simple changes, just like in the stats in the game, where we can just balance it and tweak it and make the gameplay you know, that little bit better. And that's a relatively simple update to do. Or it could be bigger things where we're adding new monsters or levels or gameplay modes. You know, it's, it is quite easy, especially near the end of the project when you're all a bit fatigued and you, you just want to get it out. It is very easy for one person to say, oh, you know what, uh, let's just do it like this. Mm -hmm. But then you, you've got the other people saying, no, you know, you need to do it properly, um, which is what happened with the credits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I think throughout it, actually, at different points, you know, one of us might have flagged a little and then the other to there, I think, to, to kind of keep that quality up, keep the energy up. And again, that, that's, a, that's a way where we can complement each other. Because it, it is a slog, I mean, I think it may, anybody's thinking of doing game development or anything like that, make no bones about it. The, the ideas bit, the fun bit, is, is 5% of it. The other 95% is the long slog. That does make the 5% worth it, but don't be under any illusions how much worth it is.